Learningmeasure.tv Science and Engineering Podcast with Emphasis on Measurement Brought to you by David Archer and LearningMeasure.com Episode 13 Power Revisited Hello, I'm David Archer, uh, owner of LearningMeasure.com and LearningMeasure.tv. Uh, this uh, podcast is brought to you by TradePub.com, GoToMeeting.com, and is part of the Blueberry community of podcasts. Check out Blueberry. They have a lot of different podcasts you might be interested in. Anyway, uh, first thing I always want to start from now on is talk a little bit about LearningMeasure.com. LearningMeasure.com is a subscription-based training uh, website uh, that covers technical topics, a lot of the measurement related. Uh, the, to sign up, uh, you get the, well, actually, everybody should register who are even remotely interested because there are some uh, things you can get at with reg registered even if you don't have a subscription. But after you register, you get two weeks free, and then it's $5 a month for all the content. Um, and that $5 a month helps pay for maintaining the site, doing this podcast, and that sort of thing. Today, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about, on the site, the forums that we're setting, set up. Um, we've set up about forums, um, course forums, um, all kinds of different areas to discuss whatever, and, uh, and there's one for each course on our, on our website. Please check that out. Okay, uh, well, I, last week I asked for questions. Um, oddly enough, I got one a, a question uh, that, I, that this episode's going to be based on. It was a question uh, basically from one of my coworkers in my day job. Um, and it had to do with RF power. So I'm going to do a little discussion about RF power measurement, um, hopefully answering their question. Um, and, but this also has applicability to maybe acoustical power in some sort of acoustic waveguide. It could apply to optical power. Um, so the, the basic idea is we're going to make, you want to make some sort of power measurement. So you, you have some, well, you have some source here, let's say. And there's some interface to the source, some sort of connector. And then you're going to hook some sort of power sensing device up to it with who knows what, some sort of indicating thing. And you're going to measure some power with your meter of some sort, some sort of indicated power. Well, there's some amount of the power is delivered to the power sensor, we'll call that power, power sensing de device, PD. Well, there's, um, when you make this connection, there, there's some power that's going to be reflected back towards the source, and there's going to be a reflection coefficient associated with that. We'll call that gamma m for gamma meter, I guess. And there's also going to be an friction coefficient associated with the generator, the the, whatever's generating the power. We'll call that gamma g. This is a, base, a basic power measurement. Okay. Every, there's all kinds of things that can happen. First of all, the indicated power is not necessarily what the power delivered is. So we'll say that the indicate the actual delivered power is going to be some constant, we'll call it eta, times the uh, indicated power. That tells you what power was delivered to the sensor if you know this. Now this eta here might be a function of the indicated power. For instance, this could be some sort of detector that has some sort of square law response so this correction is going to depend on the square of the indication. It might, in, it might also be a function of temperature, might be a function of time, it could be a function of all kinds of things. But in a lot of cases you want to find out what this is. Now, if we don't 
typically want to measure the delivered power. What we're really interested is what's called the available power. And that's the power that would be delivered to a matched load on this when it connected to this port. Okay, that's not the, going to be the same as the delivered power. Okay, now if gamma g was zero, the only reflection in the sensor was the, um, was the, um, was here, only reflection was from the sensor, then the power available would be just simply one minus gamma uh, meter squared times the deliver, uh, sorry, the delivered power is going to be one minus gamma squared times the available power. Okay, now that we have this, um, we know that the available power, the delivered power, is equal to eta times pi. So we've got eta over, so that's pi, eta pi, which is pd, divided by one minus gamma squared equals the available power. Okay, some simple algebra from that and that. Okay, because PD is A to PI. This whole quantity here, we'll call this, well, for, for lack of a better term, we'll call it one over the, K, we'll call it K. So we got K PI equals PA. Okay, this will give you the available power in terms of the indicated power. Often we just want to know this K, so with the gamma is usually included. When you do, when you, the power, like if on a uh, power sensor, the power, the Cal factor is this one over this quantity. Um, because you divide by the Cal factor in the meter, you can check that out. But this is the Cal factor. So what, but this, this doesn't tell the whole story. Because now what happens, let's say you wanted to calibrate, you wanted to figure out what this is. Well, you want to somehow set up a, a stable power. We, we don't know what that is yet. But the, one issue is now, what is the available power to the, the if, if the, we hit the case of what happens if the uh, uh, source is perfect? What if the source is not perfect? Well, the delivered power in this case is one minus gamma m squared, no surprise there. Then there's another term, one minus gamma source, and a term under the bottom, one, I'm not gonna derive this, I'm just gonna state it. It takes a little work to derive it. Okay. So this mismatch factor here in front of the available power tells you how much power is delivered. Okay, so, which of course, you can put the A to PI in, uh, well, okay. And then this is, of course, equal to A to PI. Okay, so now we can take, divide this whole thing by this one minus gamma M squared. Okay, we've got a one minus gamma M squared here. And we get rid of this term. Flip that over to the other side, and we get uh, PA equals this quantity is K. We put this over here, so we get one minus gamma S gamma M squared. This is an absolute value here. One minus gamma source squared times K PI. Okay. And that tells you what the available power is in terms of, let's say this is the Cal factor of your standard. These are all, this is some sort of other mismatch term that gives you the available power. 
question is, okay, so now we have a, a fundamental uh, equation that I'm going to write, keep that, and get rid of the rest. Oh, I need a new eraser here. <laughs> um, so, um, let PA equals 1 minus, absolute value of 1 minus gamma source gamma meter over 1 minus absolute value of gamma source squared k pi. And now I'm going to do some more racing. Now I'm going to do use my little fancy. I got some of this. Everybody should. I definitely need to get a new eraser. All right, so the problem is, how do you know what this is? Well, you can't. You can't know. I mean, I mean, you can. I mean, it's really hard to measure. You can't just take a network analyzer up, though, or something like that and measure the reflection of the source. That doesn't work. Um, so what you need to do is to figure out a way of coming up with a known reflection coefficient. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But first, I've got to pay some bills like I always do. Talk about go to meeting. You, do you say I waste hours in traffic trying to get to my clients' offices for meetings? In fact, spend more time getting to meetings than I actually do meeting? That can't really be productive. Good news for anyone who feels like that. There is an easier and a more affordable way. Go to meeting. The award-winning service that lets you hold meetings over the internet with people in multiple locations. Just log in to gotomeeting.com and start meetings with a click. Instantly everyone sees your computer desktop on their computer screen. It's like meeting in person, but less expensive and less time consuming. Hold unlimited meetings for one flat rate, meet from your office, hotel, home, anywhere. Try gotomeeting today for, free five, for 45 days. Just visit gotomeeting.com backslash podcast. That's gotomeeting.com backslash podcasts. Do more and travel less with GoToMeeting. All right. Now we've paid the bills. Uh, and you might want to try this. You might even be able to, to go to meeting stuff for your own kind, own kind of training. But we'll get back to that next time. Anyway, so now you want to, one way you can do this is what's called uh, well, is, is uses a, a, what's called a, a, a leveling, leveling configuration. You put in some sort of power splitter, and there's going to be some sort of interface, and it splits the power two ways with connectors on each end. And then you put some sort of leveling sensor that holds the available constant power at constant at this port which effect has the effect of having a constant, you know, regardless of what load you put in here, the available power stays constant. So this has effect of, of creating a known uh, source impedance. Well, this thing here is going to have some S parameters, S, I, J. Um, and we'll call this port 2, this port 3, this port 1. So for instance, S22 is just the reflection off this port all of the ports terminated. Well, when this kind of configuration, you put your unknown sensor here, and you're going to measure some power. And let's say you know this, you know this, you know the, you know the cal factor of your sensor, and you know the reflection coefficient of your sensor. Well, what's the source reflection coefficient? Turns out, and again, I'm not going to try to derive this, you can have what's called the gamma, the, the equivalent reflection coefficient for this leveling, co leveling configuration. It's S22 plus S, uh, uh, S21, S32 over S31, sorry, minus, S22 minus that. Okay. So what you do, what's, what's going on here 
now you have a calculable uh, value. So you can, you can come up with, you can solve for the available power now with a known source, um, uh, source uh, reflection coefficient. Once you've done that, you know what the available power is. So you take your standard off and put your unknown on there. Well, you invert this. So you want to solve for k, right? So you do pa for pi. Uh, let's erase the rest of this. Just, because, just remember what that was. So, so we've got PA over PI, 1 minus gamma EQ, now, squared, over 1 minus absolute values of 1 minus gamma EQ, gamma, okay, we'll just say gamma D for device under test, squared, um, equals K device under test. Okay. So now we've solved the problem. We now have calibrated, we have transferred, this is the, our standard measurement of the, to get the available power. From that, we, assuming the same available power, known reflection coefficients, we can figure out the, cal the calibration factor of the device under test. That solves the problem if that's all you want to do, but sometimes you have the problem is you have to insert something. One of LearningMeasure.tv's sponsors is TradePub.com. TradePub.com is a site where one, one can sign up for a large number of free trade publications. If you'd like to support this podcast, uh, go to the LearningMeasure.tv site, scroll down to the free publications link, and choose one of the magazines or one of the one of the publications or one of the categories and sign up through that link. Each pu publication subscribed to through this link on learningmeasure.tv website helps keep Learning Measure TV on the air. Thank you for your support. For instance, you have a leveling configuration um, I'll have some splitter here, some sort of leveling sensor, and then you have some sort of interface here. But let's say you put your standard on there somehow, and now the power coming out of here is too high for your sensor. Well, you might have to stick an attenuator in here, and then your sensor, and then it, it indicates something, you know, some sort of meter. Now this thing is going to have some sort of S parameters associated with it, too. So what you really want to know, well, you know, first of all, whatever the, you need to know what the power delivered into this combination of sensor attenuator is, or it could be an amplifier, it could be anything. Some sort of thing stuck in there, an adapter of some sort. You're going to have terms like this, okay, so the, 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 the reflection coefficient of a two-port connected to a, a load, we'll call this, we'll call this gamma uh, composite, gamma C, it's going to be S, let's call this port 1 and port 2, S11 plus uh, S21, S12 gamma D over 1 minus S22 gamma D. Okay, that's just the way it is. So the power delivered here to this whole thing is going to be the power available times, you know, this is the same sort of thing we looked at before, 1 minus gamma C squared times 1 minus gamma uh, source squared over 1 minus gamma C, gamma S, absolute value squared. Okay, that tells you how much power was delivered. But what you really want to know is what power was delivered here. So there is something called 
the adapter efficiency. And I'm going to write this out. I've got to erase it just to, to, which gives you the ratio of the power delivered to this whole thing to the power delivered to the sensor. Now, usually, you, this also is in, in, in literature is given the label eta. We're going to call it eta A for app adapter. Uh, definitely, you don't want to memorize this. It's something you always should look up because it's not straightforward. Whoops. So it's S21 squared times 1 over gamma M squared times the absolute value of 1 minus S11 gamma M squared minus this is a big long thing, S12 S21 minus S11 S22 um, gamma EQ plus S11 squared. Very big equation. And that gives you, which is equal to power uh, delivered to the sensor divided by power delivered to the two port. So essentially all you have to do in the case of, of, of calibrating something through a two port, now you have um, somehow have to insert this into this equation, but you can figure that out. Um, and, I'll, and I'll leave it at that for now. Um, so, anyway, we've just gone over the primary problem of how you can calibrate power, some of the terms that uh, uh, you can have in, in, a, in a power measurement. I should point out like this, this, this term here. If you assume all these mismatches are zero, all the reflections are zero, all you're left with is this term here, which is not surprising. What that's saying is if you ignore mismatch, if you measure zero, zero dBm power through a 10 dB attenuator, all that means is you have ten, uh, minus 10 dBm. The rest of this is a correction to that. Okay, there's nothing really fancy there. It's just you have to include the mismatch terms. And they can be quite large. I mean, a typical power measurement probably has terms on the order of 1 dB. If bad reflections, it could be worse. But um, you, need to, you need to actually stick numbers in here to do that, and I won't, uh, won't do that here. might do that next time. Unless I get a question from you guys. Again, I'm looking for people to give me questions, engineering questions, homework questions, um, any science questions, and I'll try to answer them here, especially if they're measurement related. So send your questions to questions at learningmeasure.tv, and we'll try to answer them. You know, if you have some tough problem at work that you don't know how to solve, hey, we'll get, <laughs> what, what do you have to lose? We might be able to solve it for you. If not, well, you really haven't lost that much. Also, if you have a, if you're a vendor, you want to have some sort of service or hardware or whatever, and want to be on the podcast, I really want you. I really want to, uh, people to show their stuff here. Uh, send us an email at vendors at learningmeasure.tv, and if you're in the Las Vegas area, we'd love to have you on. And finally, if you had any suggestions, not questions, about what we should do with the show or what you'd like to see, send us an email at suggestions at learningmeasure.tv. All right, uh, that's it for this episode. Um, we'll see you next time.